So in the last video I mentioned conscious hip hop and I've left some links below of some hip hop that I used to listen to a long time ago going back over 10 years ago and it's hip hop that I consider to be conscious it really woke me up to other things in consciousness I guess and I'm gonna do my best to portray my experience of hip hop I can't tell you what hip hop is I can only really share with you what it means to me so I'll start with my first exposure to rap hip hop and my first exposure to it wasn't entirely positive a lot of it was about image notoriety respect glory and the narrative was look at me look at how bad I used to have it and look at how good I've got it now look at the material possessions I've acquired for myself and I'm not knocking the guy who is doing that now if you're exploring materialism hey explore the hell out of it I made a lot of decisions that weren't wise in my younger years and I had to play that out I had to live that to become what I am now to know what I am now my experience of life has been enriched by making those choices that weren't in alignment with my true self so that was my first experience of rap and it gave me something to aspire to but it was a form of pseudo self-esteem it wasn't true self-esteem it was a case of right I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna acquire the best body the best physique I can get so that I can get all the girls acquire the money and then I'll get the respect that was my mentality at that time and that's what I set out to do now I was a boy at that time I'm talking about when I was 16, 17, 18, through the years of 18, 19, 20, around that time I was making that transition of going from being no longer a boy but not yet the man and it was a very troubling time I was suicidal for a few days I was depressed and I felt very much like the outsider I went underground and I developed a social phobia and was a little agoraphobic I didn't really want to go out that much and if I did go out I would sometimes feel paranoid a little bit panicky I couldn't relax in my own skin felt like everyone was watching me that was my experience around that time of my life and I also became aware that something wasn't quite right and the hip-hop that I was listening to was informing me of the case that that's the case that there isn't something something's not quite right with the world now I always knew that okay there's beggars on the street and there's people in poverty but at that time I became to question well why is it like that you know why is when I go out onto the street and I walk down the street why is it that there's this beggar that has lost his teeth and <laughs> why has he ended up in this situation what is going on and it became apparent that <laughs> the powers that be have made a mess humanity had made a mess with the world my perspective of the world was that the world is in chaos and 
I became focused on, well, why is the government the way it is? Why is politics the way it is? And I became aware that, to a large part, we're all workers. It's like we're slaves. I would wake up on a Monday and I'd be on the bus going to university and I'm looking at all these people going to work and none of them looked happy. I was looking at people and they had like bags under their eyes and it's like, I'm 18 at this point. And I'm thinking, what is life about? Is that what life is? That you just get on this treadmill and it's just a rat race and we're all just trying to acquire money. It became, a, it became apparent that, wow, I'm on my own now and I have to acquire money. And that's what it was, was about. And I really felt like a loser. I wasn't in the cool crowd. I didn't have any self-esteem. I was a virgin at the time and all the other guys around me were getting laid and they seemed to have it going on and I didn't. So that's when I started to retreat into myself and I stopped engaging the world and was very troubled and self-conscious. So, during that time of losing all confidence in myself, losing all confidence in society, losing confidence in the idea of a divine creator, an idea of there being a meaning to life, hip-hop, <laughs> hip-hop, it really, it sounds dramatic, but it pretty much saved my life, really. Hip-hop became like an elder brother, and it was like having an, an older brother that was saying, yeah, Mike, it's, it's messed up. I know it's messed up, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And I took a lot of heart in that. I began to take heart that, okay, there's no, I, I'm not feeling no love around because at this time I wasn't with my family, I was away, I'd left my city to go to another city to study. I was at university, I was at university so I was alone. And I didn't want to admit to my family that I'd lost myself in drugs and alcohol. But there was a light at the end of the tunnel, I believed that there was a light at the end of the tunnel and that I took there was like a flame that departed into a gentle flicker, but it was hope. It was hope that I could take back control of myself, that I could master my mind and take back my sanity. Because it felt like I was losing my sanity. I wanted to kill myself. You know, it got really low for me. I had no money. And it was crazy, smoking, looking around the ashtrays in the house to get the nicotine and out of the um, stubs of cigarette that was in the ashtray, yeah, I was taking out the tobacco from that to make a rollie. And as bad as it was, I kind of liked the situation because the hip hop I was listening to at the time, it was all about having it rough. And this is how rough I've got it. And I'm, I'm going from rags to riches. So I kind of liked this idea of me being the underdog. You know, sometimes we don't believe that we deserve anything more than what we have. And that's what I was dealing with at that time. I took heart though in that I could turn it around. And... I was listening to all this hip hop and um, the rappers were very confident but I knew that it would be flat. The words, it's just meaningless if I don't take action. The hip hop, it didn't seem as hip when I wasn't taking action. I didn't really feel like a part of it. So that's when I decided that I was going to commit myself to mastering myself and Bruce Lee became a great mentor of mine 
along with an elder brother of mine, a brother in, in real life. And I dedicated myself to martial arts. And that's when I really began to become aware, not only that the system is to a large part broken, but I became aware of the mind, the spirit. And I got back on my feet. And I developed attachments. I was attached to sex. I met a great girl. She was great at the time. And I became addicted to her. We had this kind of crazy chemistry that went on for about four years. But it was kind of crazy and it was quite volatile. And there was a lot of arguments and stuff. And breaking up, getting back together. So I went through all of that and the attachment to cannabis and nicotine and you know I'm, what I'm talking about now is where I was when I was about 24, 25 and through the age of 26, 27 I let go of all of that, started to let go of attachment, started to heal emotionally, started to find myself and I'm still finding myself. I'm still finding myself and now at this point in my life I know I've just kind of burst through like I was started at age 19 and I've just tried to sum that all up in a 10 minute video which you just can't do but anyway here we are now and it's just like now I'm starting to get flashbacks of childhood like when I was like 14 and like life was great not all the time ups and downs throughout life but times in childhood where just each dick like you could have like a day and it would just be like a clean slate there wasn't a narrative when you get older you develop a narrative a story and it's this it can often be this story of I'm doing this in my career and how am I going to make money and you know we carry baggage around with us and now at this time in my life I'm really becoming aware that at our core we are love love is our natural state when you peel away all the social conditioning we are loved infinitely and we'll, we, we will always be loved if you weren't loved you wouldn't exist creation wouldn't have created you unless it knew that it had to create you because if you didn't exist then all that is couldn't be all that is and these are the premises that work for me I'm not saying it's the premise these are beliefs that work for me keeps me sane and I and it it is a visceral experience for me when I say love is what you are at your core I mean I'm experiencing it not all the time sometimes I get caught up and I start thinking about the future and I lose the present moment but when I am in the moment I feel it here and it feels good and it feels like I want to move into that and share it and cultivate it experience it so yeah hip hop I left the links below the video to some conscious hip hop don't know what you'll make of it but it's it kept me going and I hope you get something out of that if you're into hip hop hope you got something from this video and um, guys I'll catch you later peace